so I'll go straight on to the uh, the conceptual questions. Um, yeah, I'll just start with the question one and work it um, through. So I think this question is a more or less uh, reading question and, um, well, is it? Yeah, in the section, I think we describe the current sufficiently enough that you can get that it uh, to this one. <laughs> but I won't give a lengthy explanation other than you should read the section. Um, uh, which of the following correctly can there involve? Um, well, maybe that's worth uh, describing. Let me look at the choices and see. Now, this is a reading check. Um, it, uh, it, you do kind of need to know something about a conductor. You need to know that the electrons are typically the conductors. And even in the semiconductors where there's a hole that's moving, even in the case of the electrons that do the moving, protons are part of the atomic lattice and they don't move um, in a material, in a solid material. So, um, so it would be, yes. and um, the convention of how we talk about current is we talk about direction of current as though is, there is a hypothetical positive charge moving in the same direction as current. So it, it, this is a reading check question. So please read and blame Benjamin Franklin for studying the convention the wrong way. If we could, you know, just restart everything with everything we know about physics, we would probably define electron as having um, as having a positive charge. That would make so much most of the things a lot easier. Um, <laughs> which of the following correctly states Ohm's law. Uh, to some degree, this is an um, um, algebra question. <laughs> so I, I think uh, Ohm's law is, uh, so let me actually go through this question because it, it could involve some algebra. And I think I committed early on in the semester not to make you do too much algebra or even any algebra. So, so Ohm's law, it tells a story again. It tells this story. It tells the story that when you have some material and you are imposing a voltage difference across it, that the, uh, the, and if it's a conductor, then there will be a current that's induced in that thing. And that current that's induced, it's a proportional to the difference in voltage that you are imposing across it. So that's the starting place with Ohm's law. And the <laughs> thing that you have to uh, remember is how the resistance R is defined. And resistance is the resistance to current. So the way to remember it is when R is large, you want current to be small. So in this expression, you have basically two choices, you know, in trying to write down I is equal to something, something. So I could potentially have resistance here, that's a possibility, or I could have resistance here. <laughs> you got two choices. So given the two choices, if you think through, okay, I have some fixed amount of voltage and I want current to be small when resistance is large, then it's a this combination that makes sense because when R is on the same side as current multiplying, then given the same Delta V, um, larger R would mean smaller current. So, so that's what Ohm's law says that the chain, that the voltage difference imposed across some conducting material is going to be numerically equal to the resistance times current. And now, when you look at here, you don't see any of this <laughs> in the choice here. So what you now have to do is evaluate if a, a particular expression is equivalent to do this. And I think uh, it maybe the easiest thing to do is this. So I can, all these expressions are written in this form. They are all written in such a way that they are solved for one particular quantity of the three. So, um, so last one, it's solved for V and I can see that it's not the same as this. So I can see that the last one is not it. So to distinguish between these, let me just uh, try solving it for current. 
and try solving it for resistance. So to solve this for current, what I need to do is, um, so I need to get rid of this R here. So I can do that by multiplying everything through by one over R. So I'm imagining multiplying by one over R on the left-hand side, multiplying also by one over R on the right-hand side. On the right-hand side, they cancel out so that I get just to current I, that was the whole goal. On the left-hand side, I end up with delta V over R. So looking at current here, oh, that's not the same as this. So the second choice is not it either. Okay, so it must be either first or third. Um, so I need to solve for R. So looking back up here, um, so I want to be left alone with the R, which means I want to get rid of I. So this time I'm gonna multiply through by one over I. So when I do that, on the right-hand side, I'm just left with the R, the I's cancel each other out. And on the left-hand side, I get the change of voltage divided by current. Okay, R is equal to V over I. Yeah, I guess that's this one. And I think it's uh, probably possible to answer this question without going through the full algebra, but, um, I, you know, oops, sorry. I changed my, uh, <laughs> so the correct answer was this. I double clicked and accidentally changed the choice to this. Um, so, yeah. Okay, if there are no question here, let me uh, keep moving on through remainder of the set and hopefully finish um, in not that long. So this is a, again a calculation question done in the other set um, or other set of videos that you have access to. Same thing with this. I think I only did a part A, but once you do part A and then the other parts are kind of the same. So um, yeah, same deal with the question six. Um, this is one of those fun things about um, all these non-SI units that are commonly in use. I'm pretty sure I did this in one of the videos. So, uh, in any case, let me just uh, end that question eight. Um, this is a reading track question, so um, it has the you know hint says. <laughs> so you can kind of uh, uh, that's what I would recommend. Um, but let me kind of try to uh, order this. I think if I, um, yeah, order them, then um, or the order in which these descriptions are from uh, nothing to the most dangerous, then they will should kind of match uh, order of this current. So let me try to order them that way. So the I'll, I'll give a number of one, um, to the thing that seems uh, least of anything. And the thing that seems the least of anything is this one, threshold of sensation. Because if it's below the threshold, that means you can't feel it. So if you can't feel it, that's literally nothing. Okay, uh, C and D sound a little serious. So I'm choosing between A and B, uh, which corresponds to lesser amount of current. And I guess it's a question of if is pain worse or is harm less worse? I, I think, uh, um, or harm worse. I think a pain, this, you couldn't feel pain without actually being harmed because pain is, uh, you know, our body's way of telling us that there's either harm occurring or harm is imminent. So I think onset of pain would be the next level. So it's possible for you to feel pain under some circumstances where there's no harm, temporary or permanent. I guess, unless, you know, pain itself is harm. <laughs> and, and the maximum harmless current would be the next level. That's where you do start to worry about actual tissue damage or um, something, harm. Um, so, you know, I actually don't remember between C and D. Heart rhythm may be disrupted, often fatal. Cannot let go for the duration of the shot because of. I think D is actually uh, before C. Um, I think. <laughs> if I had to guess, I would say this. Because, um, you know, there are people who 
get electrocuted. And one of the things that's dangerous in electrocution is if you have grabbed something, then the, the electrical current uh, messes with the, the operation of the synapses and how your muscle works. And sometimes it, the electrical current causes to just uh, grab without meaning to. And, um, and people are sometimes in this situation and their heart don't necessarily stop. So I think that's a lesser amount of current then this is the greater amount of current. The devices like uh, heart defibrillators actually work by uh, work by this. Yeah. So let's give it a try. And you know, I could be wrong. <laughs> this is one of those questions that I would recommend that you read the section. <laughs> um, and because this is not necessarily a physics thing, I don't. This is. A, because this is, you know, technically medical thing, and uh, I'm sure some of you know more medical things than I do. Um, so according to my guess, this should be D and this should be C. And if I don't get 100% credit, I'll just swap that order. We'll see. Uh, yeah, okay. So I was wrong about these two things. Again, don't um, get your medical advice from a physicist. I only know what I have to know, and sometimes not even that. Oops. Uh, so, okay, so that is actually correct. And all this is covered in the textbooks, and you know you don't have to have it memorized. <laughs> so, um, so if you look in the textbook, then you will see all this described here. Uh, there might even be, yeah, there's, there's an actual table. And yeah, wait, onset of, oh, wait, that's, a, uh, I actually, the thing I got wrong was uh, onset of pain. So I guess muscular contraction is actually much less. All right. Um, <laughs> Again, read the textbook, please. So with that, I think, okay, so I need to, um, so yeah, threshold sensation, um, onset of pain. Oh, wait, also onset of pain was actually 50. So this was a, and then uh, maximum harmless current was five. Cannot let go, that's uh, D or that's 10 milliampere and C, onset of pain, yeah, and C is the heart to rhythm LB. Okay. <laughs> Maybe have it side by side with the textbook. Yeah, and um, so I think with the AEDs, so they do it with a, a pulse, pulse mode. So I think it, thought they were usually described in terms of joules. I think it might be a 50 joule. I probably should have stopped speaking on medical things because uh, I'm a physicist, not a doctor. So anything that relates to medical devices, what's in the textbook should be correct. Somebody did the research and um, that's basically what's in the textbook. But, um, you know, I, again, I'm a physicist, not a doctor. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure when they say six thousand ampere, it's uh, or or six ampere, six thousand milliampere. Uh, that's the peak current. That's uh, the maximum current in the pulse. And um, yeah, I'll just leave that there. 